Welcome everybody. It is November the 12th and I'm here on a Sunday evening to share with you what little bit of stitching I got to do today. <laughs> Our son has decided to relocate. Their lease is up at the end of this month and he has found a new place to uh, live. So today uh, my husband took his truck over and um, he and my son uh, moved uh, his things out of the house. He didn't have that much, and um, so that was easy to do. And now um, he's got it, getting it all sorted and ready to go into his new place. Um, so our day was a little bit busy, <laughs> a little bit busy, but I did get a little stitching in. My Alabama Stitcher bingo game called for Nativity today, the Nativity by Teresa Wentzler. I've been working on this for a while. This was restarted uh, a while ago, and I've been working my way through it. Um, if you've ever done a Teresa Wentzler, you'll know you do it a little bit at a time. Um, at least I do. Um, so, since it was a bingo call, I only needed 100 stitches in it today, and that's probably a good thing because with all the moving and stuff, I didn't have a whole lot of time. But the good news is there's also a challenge I have been working on in my Daily 30 group, and it's uh, either a minimum of 100 stitches or a maximum of two. So since I could do 100 and get credit for it, that's what I chose to do. So today I put in 106 stitches, mainly because of the time constraint. I had hoped to do 200, but it didn't work out that way. But I worked on Mary, and I came over here and I did some ninja stitches up around her neck, little half stitches, one or two stitches here or there. And then I pulled out the colors to um, work, start working on her cloak. And I, my thought was to finish her cloak on this side at least, so that I could come over here and finish the angel. But uh, I'm just starting to work my way down now that I've rolled it up and gotten to that halfway mark. Oh, sorry, hit my stand there. But I'm very pleased with that. I think that's a, um, at least I got to touch her and uh, get some work put into her today. So the only other thing I will uh, share with you is that I had mentioned in my latest video that um, the Magazine Monthly Challenge Group is going to have a an event. Robin, um, Paul has put up an event uh, called uh, Turkey Trot, and I had mentioned I was going to go uh, with her on that, you know, journey and try to stitch on something with a bird starting on the 19th, and we have seven days to stitch on it, and we have to get five hours or 500 stitches, so that's sort of like a whip-go goal for me. It's sort of like an extra one. Um, but I decided to go into my new starts that I had planned for next year and just see if I had something in there with a bird. And I had several pieces that actually have a bird in them. But since this is fall, winter, and since it's around Thanksgiving, um, I decided to do Erica Michaels Autumn Berries. And I love this one. It's, um, it's got the, uh... I think that's a pie right there on that one. But this one is a scarecrow. And if you look on his arm right here, there's a little black bird on, that, on the scarecrow. So it will have a bird on it, and that'll allow me to get a start on this berry. Even if I don't finish it, it'll be a heads up start for next year. So I decided to do that. And I just picked that out uh, today, so I wanted to share it with you. I have it kitted, ready to go. Um, today, because I finished my pandemic yesterday, if you haven't seen that, go back to my just video, my just previous video. Um, and when I finish something big like that, it tends to trigger me to go through a cleaning out. I don't know what it is. Um, but anyway, today I spent a little time picking things up out of bags. I had bags from all my trips. I had bags from my retreat. I had bags from other retreats that still had a few things in them that I hadn't found a home for. 
And so I just had a collection of bags over here <laughs> lined up past my desk. So I got all of those cleared out, got combs for everything, put the bags away, and um, it just feels a lot lighter in here, which is good. I wanted that. Um, so there you go. Got that taken care of. A little housekeeping. Um, tomorrow's a big day. Uh, it's Coco's annual physical, and my husband is going to be taking her about 2 o'clock for that. And um, other than that, um, I think I'll just be helping my son get the rest of his move things, you know, address changes, all this kind of stuff that's got to be done. I'm just trying to help him remember everything he has to do um, so that we can get that taken care of, uh, to help him get it taken care of. And so I'm hoping to get more stitching in tomorrow. The bingo call for tomorrow is Halloween Quaker. And I'm also using Halloween Quaker in one of my mo um, challenges. So I'm looking forward to that too. And um, I'll get hopefully get some good stitching in that tomorrow and I'll be able to share it with you. Happy stitching everybody. Hello everyone, welcome back. It is the 15th of November and this is Dina. And I want to talk to you about my stitching that I've been doing for the last couple of days. My husband and I had the opportunity to take a little road trip yesterday, so I took stitching with me in the car. And I was working on my um, bingo uh, requirements because it's 100 stitches a day, and I, uh, I needed to do two days worth. And um, I also had some prompts that I could use those same whips for. Uh, in order to meet some of my challenges in my Daily 30 group. So I'll show you two of the three, no, three of the four that I've stitched on. I have another one down here that I forgot all about. So um, this was one of my bingo calls. And I, I only got a little bit done on it, but I want to show it to you in, in full disclosure. I got this much done. <laughs> At this point in the day, it was getting later in the day, and the light had gone down behind the trees, the sun had, and it was like a strobe light going across the car, and I thought I was going to lose my mind. It was just flashing, you know, the whole way. So I couldn't, I couldn't get any more than this done. So it's not that much. It's probably about less than 100 stitches, I'm sure. But anyway, um, I wanted to work on it while I was in the car. And uh, I took it, and it was the third thing I pulled out. And I wound up not getting to do very much on it. But it's still here. It's still an active whip. And I may, I may, I have a Zoom call tonight, and I very well may stitch on it during the Zoom call. So I'm going to leave it out. So, the other thing that I stitched on, the first thing that I stitched on, really, was my um, call for buttons and bows. And this is one of my series that I'm doing for my Sew Together series. It also happened to be a um, whip-go call. So, as it turned out, I, I met my 100 stitches on it. Then I stitched a little more and I used it for my other prompt that I was going to use it for in the Daily 30 group. And then today when I finished stitching on it, I realized that all total I had done enough to meet my 5 hours or 500 stitches for Whip Go. And so it's it's been done. It's been marked off. I may have showed you that earlier because I hit it a little earlier. Um, and I went back today to val validate it, and I had done more than that, so I made sure it was colored off. But this is where I got to on the trip that we took yesterday. So I've added now the buttons across the top and the bow. So the next time I pick this up, I'll probably go down here and get the little two buttons 
that are at the bottom and then off of that do the little bunny rabbit that's right here. I'm saving the basket of flowers for last because the basket is a big weaving stitch. It's a specialty stitch and I want to do that last. So that's where we are with this. I've been working on it though because next month for December one of my my final call on that bingo board is the next sew together so if i don't finish it this month then i'm going to have two of them that i'm trying to work on at the same time but there you go i will sit that till after till afterward <laughs> just to help your ears a little bit Okay, so the next one that I worked on was for my uh, call on my bingo group, and it was Halloween Quaker. And on, on the car ride, um, I put in 101 stitches, which was the top portion of this tree. And then today, I went ahead and completed the tree and started working on the ground. So this is the bottom of the piece right there. It won't go any lower than that so I have plenty of room all the way around for an easy frame job on this one so today I went ahead and I stitched an additional 127 stitches so my total for this motif was 228 and that's important simply because I had chosen Halloween Quaker to meet a prompt in one of my challenges and I had to stitch a minimum of 200 stitches for it to meet the prompt and the uh, the prompt that I used it for was to use a whip that was a style of stitching or a designer that you did not learn about until later in your stitching life. And the style of this one is a Quaker, and I had never heard of Quakers before I came back to cross stitching in 2014. And even when I did, I wasn't, I didn't quite understand that that was this motif style at first. It took me a little while to catch up on everything. I had so much to learn. And then when I found um, a few Quakers that I like, uh, one of them I've done is the Winter Quaker from Rosewood Manor. And then this one is um, Halloween Quaker from uh, Leela's Studio. So those are two designers that I um, hadn't met, uh, hadn't, discovered until recently uh, in the last few years, couple of years or more. So this is where I'm at on the Halloween Quaker and I love the fact that I've gone all the way down now and I actually have the bottom. So uh, I think that's great. So there you go. Um, now the final stitching that I have that I did yesterday in the car, I did my hundred stitches um, it was actually 118 stitches and I, I went ahead and posted that in my bingo group but I also have it in my acrostic in the daily 30 and that requires 300 stitches so I'm gonna stop filming and I'm gonna go try to get those other 200 stitches <laughs> if I can today um, and then I hopefully will pop back on here and be able to show you my autumn in the country and where I've gotten to on that one, um, hopefully before I have to do my Zoom call tonight. So I have been stitching. I've been stitching little snippets and then going back and filling them in more, um, you know, for uh, other prompts. Today's call is number six on my board, which is Spring Quilt. And since I'm trying to catch up um, extra stitches that I needed on these three whips, I've decided that I will possibly um, wait till in the morning to do that in whatever is called for tomorrow. Um, 100 stitches is not hard to get in uh, on a couple of projects, especially if they're not being used for anything else. Now, Spring Quilt is being used for something else. It is being used for one of my challenges um, in another Facebook group one of my acrostics and so it's the magazine monthly uh, challenge acrostic and it's for this the one of the O's in raccoon and I called it one seasons quilt which is spring is the season 
So it's one of the Four Seasons quilts, and um, it's spring quilt. And that group allows you to set whatever goal you want. So when I do my 100 stitches on it, whether it be tonight or in the morning, I will also have this letter net in that acrostic. And today, when I finish my autumn in the country, that will be the last one that I need. So I should be finished with the Magazine Monthly Challenge acrostic no later than tomorrow, if all goes as planned. So that'll be fun. I'm enjoying that. I want to talk to you a little bit about my channel. Um, I noticed the other day when I was answering some comments that I am sitting at 6,998 subscribers. <laughs> it's very close to a milestone. Uh, so if you've been watching and you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button and help me pop over uh, to that milestone because when you do, I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm so excited about it and I would love to do it in time for Christmas. Um, if not, that's okay. I'm not, it's not all about numbers for me, but I just noticed it and I, because when my computer screen popped up, it was right there, you know, on that page that popped up. So I thought, wow, this would be kind of neat to hit, hit 7,000. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you like what you see here, please do and help me kind of get over that hump. Um, the other thing I want to let you know too, I'll remind you is that we have um, my birthday, uh, Sal, if you're interested in stitching on any uh, ornament of any size for any season for my birthday, just something ornament. Or if you'd rather do something that's got just a dog in it, that's fine. Because my ornament is about Coco. It's, it's um, Felice Naughty Dog is what I'm going to be stitching. And um, my friend Glow is going to start that with me on the 14th of December. So I, ho I hope you'll join us with that. Um, anyway, um, I think I have mentioned before uh, that the Magazine Monthly uh, Challenge group has uh, a little thing we're doing on the 19th of November, but I'm not sure this video will be up before then. So if it is, I'll tell you, it's Turkey Trot. And you have seven days to stitch on any pattern that you want that has a bird. And you show your start picture, your end picture. And uh, I do believe there's a prize involved. There's a drawing for a prize. So one, one lucky winner. But you can't win if you don't participate. <laughs> so thank you, Robin Hall, for organizing that, you know, for us. And uh, that'll be, I think, all the news fit to print until I get back up here and finish my stitching on Autumn in the Country uh, for the prompt, and then I can come back and share with you what that is. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello again. This is Dina, and I'm back a little bit later on the 15th, as promised. I went ahead and finished stitching on my Autumn in the Country, and I was able to stitch enough stitches in it to meet my um, acrostic in the, in the um, Daily 30 group. And I was using the letter for that acrostic. Hold on. was for C for Autumn in the Country. And now I have one letter left in the Daily 30 acrostic. I have one letter left in the 24 Hours Cross Stitch and one letter left in the Magazine Monthly Challenge. So that's great, because I've got the rest of the month, you know, to get those done. And then in addition to that, in my Daily 30 group, I was to stitch on a project that I could relate to food and I struggled with that and I was talking to my friend Donna tonight and I told her I said I'm having a really hard time coming up with something to do with food and she said well uh, I think I'm gonna use pumpkins and I said I have what I'm working on has pumpkins I think and I looked at it and sure enough autumn in the country has a row of pumpkins there underneath the farm scene 
but then I noticed it has acorns all around it, and I've already stitched a bunch of those. And it also has, I think they are tomatoes up here across the top. And so it's got lots of food on it. So I used it for that as well. So today alone, I've put 467 stitches in this thing. <laughs> and I also put 118 in it when I was in the car the other day. So I have well over 500 stitches in it since you saw it. So let's look at it. I love the fact that the fabric is showing up so well tonight. It doesn't always in the lighting that I have, but this really is pretty. And this is an autumn fabric. Um, I'll have to look up the dyer's name. But what happened today, uh, and starting yesterday, I started over here. I think I had gotten to about right here. And I did all the three lines all the way around and met up back over here and I did the bird. So that's exciting because my border matched the first time. I'm very happy about that. So I have a good solid half of this done and now I can start working on the rest of the seam in here and then as I come down on the sides here and finish it up. Um, I'm very, very pleased with this progress. I think it's going quite well, and I love working on it in the autumn, kind of slash going into winter season. We had a cooler, cooler day today, so it kind of feels like we're getting ready to go into winter. But anyway, very happy with the progress on that, and that means I've had an extremely productive day stitching today. That's awesome. I will... I'm gonna go join Coco and my hubby. They've already gone to bed ahead of me. And I'm gonna go join them now. And then tomorrow, I have a fun, fun day. I get to talk with my friends, Mary and Joanne. And this is our once a month Zoom or call. We don't use Zoom, but um, we do it through Facebook Messenger. And, um, I'm looking forward to it. Haven't talked to him in a month. It's, a lot has happened since then. And um, I'm really happy to get to catch up with them. So, I will probably have some stitching to share with you tomorrow simply because I will be stitching with them on the phone in the morning. So, until we speak again, everybody, happy stitching. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. It is Thursday, the 16th of November, and I'm here to share with you a little bit of stitching I've done today. This morning, I started out working on my bingo call from yesterday, which was spring quilt, and I had to put 100 stitches into my spring quilt, and so I worked, um, just started working on where I left off and working my way on across that, some, that farm scene right in the middle, and I got a bit of progress. I finished off the end of this barn, and I started working on the roof over on this barn. Um, and all in all, I had 112 stitches. I only needed 100 for my uh, bingo prompt, and so I went ahead and stopped on this because this was actually yesterday's call. I didn't get to it. So I think it's beautiful. I love this piece. I love the colors. And I'm just working my way across this about halfway through. And then I'll go back down and work my way. Because it's on different pages in the pattern. So that's why it's easier to do it this way. But I wanted to share that with you. Because I haven't shown it to you in a while. Haven't worked on it in a while. And then... I had a prompt I wanted to meet in one of my Daily 30 challenges, and that was to stitch on a whip that um, actually represented one of your favorites or one of your favorite designers or one of the favorite styles of stitching that you had. 
And I chose to go with one of my favorite designers, which is Little House Needleworks. I, I enjoy them a lot. I've stitched quite a few Little House Needlework patterns over the years. And this was a freebie from 2014. And I pulled it out for this year for my WhipGo board. And it was a WhipGo call. And I finished the WhipGo part of it. And so now I decided to use it for a prompt for that favorite designer. And I went ahead and put 254 stitches in it because I needed 200. And you'll see why I wound up doing the 54 extra. And that's because I finished this whole tree, the second one, finished that. And then I did this little wind, the little um, indicator for a, the wind blowing. And so I, that was 254 stitches when you added all that together. So I decided to stop there. It's getting close. I have the little man on the sled, the polar bear, and the tree, and a little bird on the bottom to do from here across. And then I've got this huge snowflake up here that's in the picture. Um, if I want to put that in there, I'm thinking I might enjoy putting something else up there, like a button snowflake, but maybe not. I'll see when I get there. But this is the little little house needleworks free pattern um it was called for um on 32 count natural but what i'm putting it on is actually a be stitch me fabric called frost and i think the color looks great for a wintry sky so there you have it i worked on that this morning too and got a prompt out of it so pretty excited about that <laughs> so the next thing I want to work on quite frankly um, is uh, my bingo call for today it says it can be a whip go call and my only whip go for this month that I haven't finished is my nativity and I need four more hours in it now I don't know if I can get all four today but I can certainly get started on it and at least get one maybe two who knows um, my husband and I may be going out later, so I might only get one. I don't know. But whatever I finish up by this evening, I hope to come back and share it with you. Um, but I didn't want to uh, wait in case we got busy and I got caught out and about and I didn't get to, to show you anything today. So those are the two things I've stitched on this morning. And now I am taking a break for lunch and then I'm going to hit it hard on nativity see if i can't get some stitching in it in the meantime happy stitching everybody good evening everyone welcome back i got to do a little bit of stitching this evening and i am very happy to report that i met my 100 stitches by stitching 103 on my nativity so this is the Teresa Wentzler nativity that I'm working on. And this is my restart of it. So I'm happy with how it's turning out. And today I put all 103 stitches in her cloak. I just added two to three more colors in here. And I've almost got her sleeve done. So, um, that was that was a happy moment I enjoyed that I still have three hours left to do on this piece for the month for whip go and so I'm gonna keep it handy um, to work on it a little bit uh, again very soon I hope and um, but I'm enjoying the work that I'm doing it is interesting every single color that I stitched tonight was a blend <laughs> so I heard someone recently talking about trying to, to get ready for a Teresa Wentzler, and I don't know if they watch my channel or not, but I will remind you that um, when I kit mine up, I do bobbinate for the simple reason. I do that anyway, but for this one in particular, I do it because for blends, I go ahead and blend the two colors. I write them on there. I take the six strands, I pair them together, 
and I put three on the bottom, one, one across the middle, and then two over the top so that they stay separated. But that way, when that, when that blend is called, I just simply grab my bobbin, I unravel one of the pairs, and I stitch just like you would a floss coming off a bobbin for anything else. And then when I run out, there's one that ran out tonight. So when I run out, then I will take those two colors again and do the six strands and fix the bobbin um, before I start stitching again with that color. So it makes it, for me, much easier because I don't have to stop and blend anything. I just grab the bobbin and go. And that makes it easy to stitch. I'm, I'm not, it doesn't matter to me if the number is a single number or a blend because they're gonna be sitting right in there. I do file them under the lowest number first so that you know I can I do that consistently just so I know I can find everything <laughs> so anyway I thought I, I bore repeating since I heard someone talking about stitching a Teresa Wentzler recently and they said oh it's got all these blends well if you take just a little while to prep it ahead of time it'll save you hours <laughs> as you go I also wanted to share something with you. I forgot to tell you all ago that when I finished my spring Quaker today for my, the part that I stitched for today, I didn't finish it today, but when, the part that I stitched today, um, and I posted it, it completes the Magazine Monthly acrostic. And so my uh, Magazine Monthly acrostic raccoon is complete. Um, my, the word fox has one left because I did my Halloween Quaker already, which meant the F because that fabric's name is Philstone and I was using it for the F. So that one has one left and that is X and that's in my alphabet for in Let Love Rain. And I haven't stitched on let love rain yet because it hasn't been called in my bingo group yet for the month and I when I do that then I can stitch enough for the bingo I can stitch enough for my um, daily 30 group and then it will also hit the X uh, in the alphabet and it will complete the R and complete the word in my 24 hours of cross stitch across deck so that let love rain is gonna be doing a lot <laughs> I can't wait to get busy and work on that. Um, however, I don't know what the, let's see, I do know the number for tomorrow uh, was called. It was number 15, and on my board, that is Snow and Mountains. And so I need to pull that out and put 100 stitches in it um, tomorrow. So I hopefully will do that uh, very soon. Uh, in maybe early in the morning. I'm not sure. I have a friend coming to stitch with me, but she's not going to get here till 10. So depending on how early I get up, I might could do my 100 stitches before she gets here on that one because I want to stitch on something easy to talk and easy to visit. Um, and that one's not. <laughs> so there you have it. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. And um, probably all for this evening and I um, I'm gonna go down and watch a little TV with my husband and visit with him so I hope to check in with you guys tomorrow happy stitching good evening everyone welcome back this is Dina and I'm here to talk to you about my cross stitch for today Today, I decided to work on um, a piece that would be easy enough uh, for me to work on while I had company because my friend Juliana came over to stitch with me today. And I looked at my um, new challenge in the Daily 30 group today, and the first one on the list was to stitch on a whip that had two identical parts. And as it happened, I had pulled this whip out so I could stitch on it with my friend Juliana um, because it's easy enough to see and follow the pattern. And I thought this will be good. 
So, when I look down at it, I realize it has two identical buttons. They're stitched exactly the same, and um, that would meet the qualifications. So, I'm talking about my buttons and bows, and you can see these two buttons are identical, and I stitched them identically on mine, even though I did a full color conversion on this. These are very muted colors, and I'm doing my colors very bright spring colors. This is going to be spring for me. And so I started working on it today. I stitched these two buttons and this rabbit while Juliana and I were stitching today. And then as she was leaving, I came back up here and I tackled this basket. And you may not be able to tell it from where you are, but it's a weave. So the stitches go uh, straight just satin stitches, but they're um, in one direction on one, and then on the other color, they're in another, they're in the opposite direction. So I thought it was gonna be a real tough thing to do, and it really wasn't. It was great fun, easy to do, and I'm so tickled with how it turned out. So let me show it to you. because I didn't just do the basket. I did the basket and I did the greenery and a, a few of the flowers and I was able to meet the prompt for stitching on something that had the identical parts. And then when I finished that prompt, um, I went ahead and continued stitching until I finished the whole thing. This was a call in November on WhipGo. And now it's done, it's complete. And so it is one of six. I've gotten five done so far, here they are. So you can see I'm using these same beautiful spring colors throughout. And I'm gonna frame them like they're situated. I'm gonna frame these three, and then I'm gonna frame these lower three. These three, you'll notice if you're a, if you're really looking close, they do not have any purple in them. I didn't get the purple till later, and I added it because this pattern called for it. And so then I incorporated a little bit of purple in the middle. And hopefully, I don't know about the last one, because the last one is on, um, I think, needles and pins or something, and it's almost all red and orange. It's, it's, um, let's see, do I have it right here? The last one in the group. Oh, that's not pretty. This is the one I want. This will be the next one that I put on here, and this is a December whip go call, but as you can tell, those are mostly um, pinks and reds. So I may be winding up changing um, the colors. I, I want to keep the tomatoes red, of course. Um, and I have, a, I have this orangey red that I have been using, this dark orangey red on those flowers and I think that's what I'm gonna do my tomatoes in but um, the rest of it I don't know yet um, we'll see but I haven't sat down and done um, a conversion yet I have to do that before I get started and I may try to get that done before December because this time my whip go goal was five hours and part of that five hours was me doing the conversion. But I think they're pretty, I think they're very springish. Oh, upside down for you, sorry. I think they're very springish. And I think I think the series framed three and three would be a pretty uh, set to put up, you know, in the springtime. Uh, so there were uh, specialty stitches in so far in two of them and um, not in the rest of them. Haven't noticed anywhere, anywhere else, but 
one of them is this basket of flowers. They're puffy, if you can see. Isn't that beautiful? And then today, I had the basket that was, I think, a specialty of its sorts. So, um, I don't think there are any specialty stitches that I can see on the pins and needles. So, um, it looks like this one's going to be a lot fewer colors. And um, so, it could be that I'm just going to wind up doing, you know, my um, orange red. This one actually has a variegated, or either it's, you know, going to be uh, more than one color in there. But it, it looks like it is. So, anyway, one more look at my finish for today. I'm excited about that. Got that done. I had my big pandemic finish last time. Um, but this time I'll have the small, <laughs> the small finish. But it is a whip go finish and that's great. And I'm glad to have it. And I can move on uh, when December rolls around. I can start on this one. If not before. But um, trying to get that, that one finished up. So that's it for today. I, um, I stitched on it all day long. I think I actually stitched 947 stitches all total. Today my friend Juliana was here and she has just joined the uh, Daily 30 group when it had open um, season recently and this is her first month to work at, on the uh, monthly challenge for the uh, cross stick, which is cornucopia, and she finished her first letter today, and we posted everything. I showed her how to do that in the Facebook group because she had never done that before, and she is so happy. She's very excited. She enjoyed it. She did it. She felt motivated. She felt like she needed to get that thing finished and, you know, get her 300 stitches, and get it posted, and when she accomplished that goal, I think she really felt good. Um, and that that made me smile. I was thrilled, um, you know, that, that she did that. And so I was so tickled that it happened here, and I got to see it and be a part of it and celebrate it with her. That was so much fun. All right, I'm gonna say good night. Happy stitching, everybody. So we put the jackalope back down here. Coco, um, she's over here. She hasn't seen it yet. Coco, look who's back. Somebody's here. Look, look, look. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Ooh, she stopped. Where have you back. been? Where have you been? She says. Where have you been? <laughs> Your jackalope friend is back. Yeah. Where'd he come from? Yay! <laughs> Yay!